So how much in total have you made from Bug Bounty? 80... Yes, 84k. 84... Thousand dollars. Yes. Meet Larry Voltage, an amazing hacker who has found 18 vulnerabilities on just Reddit alone, lowest being $100 and the highest being $10,000. So today, I've got a chance to interview him and ask him some questions y'all wanted me to ask. Part 2 of our interview, where we go a bit in depth, will be available on my course, so check it out. Link is in the description. The question is, how the hell did you even found such an IP address or a proxy, HTTP proxy, that was allowing you to queue internal IP, uh, internal hosts. The domains they use for their internet related services. And what I did, I started to research the domain and first uh, thing I looked up was uh, this domain on the Reddit, on their GitHub page. So they have an open GitHub. So I searched for snuggets.net and what I found was not only that domain, but also snoo.dev domain. And after that, I just plugged it into Kansas Search and I found a bunch of IPs and one of them was behaving like a proxy. So that is basically how I found the uh, domain. Oh my God, That's, that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, I didn't understand how you found it. So I like had a hypothesis that you probably did IP scanning and somehow stumbled upon it and then did port scanning. Like I, I had this wild ideas. I, I just wanted to say that... Uh... The scope page on Hackeron really discloses a lot of interesting stuff and not everybody looks at it, so it may be worth looking for others. Oh, interesting, interesting. You said the scope actually leaks a lot of stuff interesting too, right? So you said that this was behaving like a proxy. Could you please tell us more about how the hell did you figure out it was behaving like a proxy? Yeah, so whenever you actually try to access that AP without using a proper host, it would tell you that you're using a wrong domain because it tried to send you a certificate for snoo.dev. So what I did, I just uh, tried to search for already existing certificates for that domain and I found one certificate for an instance of uh, Reddit's employer. Employee. He used that uh, domain to uh, host an admin page and I just plugged it into the host and it worked. It just uh, returned me the whole page. Oh, so that's why, that's why it was eradicated here in the report. Yeah, so... Uh, and almost, uh, sorry, a very important feature I wanted to share was Kansas search through certificates. So usually people use Kansas to search through hosts, but a really great feature, they allow you to search through existing registered certificates for domains. And it could leak a lot of interesting stuff, such as internal domains like uh, the one I found. So. You don't even need to use Subfinder or any other brute force. Oh, okay, okay. So now I see. Now I'm, I was wrong. I was very horribly wrong. I thought that you were doing the port scanning and damn, that was my mistake actually. So yeah, this is a nice find. Congratulations on it. Yeah, I was really lucky. Like uh, this mine was exposed for around a week when I found it. So just luck. So do you think it's mostly based on luck since you found, because I found vulnerabilities, you have found vulnerabilities. So tell us for the audience, do you think it's mostly luck? Yeah, yeah I, I get you. I get you. So I think sometimes it is luck, like with this report, but mostly you have to look, uh, you have to look into more hidden stuff. Like usually I try to search for new features. I try to monitor Reddit's updates, change logs, and those features are not really tested by other hackers. So uh, there is more chance you will find something interesting there. So no, I don't think it is entirely based on luck. Yeah, it's not based on luck, but I totally get you with testing out the new features. You know, when uh, Threads, is it called Threads? The Instagram, the meta made a whole new platform yes. called Threads. I found so many vulnerabilities on it because I thought that nobody's going to test on this, but it's new. So maybe I should go ahead and try on it. So yeah, that's absolutely something you should just go test new features, especially on like these better 
bigger platforms because they tend to like rush everything and just put it out. So yeah, actually that's a solid advice for the audience. Do you think that this bug or any particular bug you have found was mostly automation or is it mostly manual work of your research? Like, do you rely on automation or do you mostly rely on your research or like you doing the research, not, not automating? Yeah, so I usually don't do any automation for a bug bounty. I usually use automation only for stuff like CTFs or I don't know, targeted pen tests because with bug bounties, there is really nothing to, almost nothing to automate. Like everything you can find, everything you need to find is either in scope or in Kansas. So the only time you have to automate is when you have some specific vulnerability like an SSRF and you need to brute force some hosts, maybe like that. But no, it's mostly manual work. Yeah, I agree with you. Actually, I don't even use automation at all for, as a matter of fact, um, but I actually have to ask you before I even continue with the questions, do you, pre what kind of operating system you use? Because it's become such a common question on my channel. Everybody's like, oh, I use Linux. Oh, I use Mac OS. It's the best. Oh, I use Windows. It's the best. Like what do, what kind of OS do you use? Well, I use Linux, Linux mostly for my work. I also have a dual boot with Windows, so it actually depends on the target. For Reddit, I mostly use Linux because most of my tools are there, but sometimes there are applications which are, you know, they have some binaries, they have some electron-based uh, apps, and they are better to be tested on Windows. Was this vulnerability in particular a fast find or you actually spent a few days, hours or possibly even minutes sometimes to find it? Uh, actually, this was a really fast find. I was searching for bugs for a whole day and I didn't find any. I was uh, really tired. I went to bed and then I actually used my phone to searched through the Reddit scope, through the Kansas, and I also filed this report for my phone. I didn't even use my PC. And the trajectory was really fast, and I got a uh, response in the same day. So it was a uh, lightning fast. Well, uh, another question is, uh, what is your specialty? Are you a web hacker? Like, are you a binary? Do you like binary exploitation? Are you hacking Android apps as well? Like. What is your, what also do you know to do in hacking? Like, is it just web or it's also all sorts of things? Well, it's mostly web, but I'm also really interested in cryptography and uh, reverse engineering. Mainly cryptography. Uh, yes, this is my second specialty. So. Oh, well, it comes, comes in handy, especially because cryptography and web are sometimes intertwined and they're kind of related. So you, you, it's good to understand cryptography as well. Okay, so since you said you've been learning for like five years, right? So what was your, uh, what helped you mostly in learning? Like what platforms did you use? Like what kind of helped you for all of my audience to understand your process of how you got here where you are today? Well, my process wasn't really organized. I was just interested in this topic. So I just uh, watched random YouTube videos that told me how to use uh, simple uh, web templates to hack somebody's camera. But then I started to actually hack on Try Hack Me. I started to read about vulnerabilities on hack tricks. It really helped me to understand uh, how the logic behind those vulnerabilities worked. I started to hack on Hack the Lab and it all helped me to really get some real experience so yes, mostly I would recommend uh, people to try out TryHack Me. Like it's a great platform. What kind of stuff were you able to access, and how bad was it? Like, could you do something that was really bad? And what what was the thought process of once you figure out you could hit an internal endpoint? Well, the exact endpoint I did hit in my testing wasn't very bad, but from what I saw from Kansas logs, there were a few endpoints that were interesting in their names, but I figured out that I should first file up a report with the information I have, and then if they downgrade it to medium, I would ask them for a permission to actually uh, more information if I could. Uh, so that is usually what I do with such uh, situations. So you, I think ideal 
ideal process thought would be to think if this is enough for your severity that you want and uh, if it is just report what you already have and don't access more information like you, you could ask for permission if you want to but i usually try to stay out of yeah personal stuff. can you like tell us what other critical vulnerabilities have you found i'm not like all of the that's publicly of course available through the reports but just for us to understand what kind of stuff have you found more than just this maybe on reddit maybe on other platforms yeah, so on Reddit, I had, I think it's safe to disclose some stuff, I won't disclose everything, but I found a way to actually extract HTTP only cookies, so it actually gave me an account takeover, and was fixed in a matter of 5 minutes, yes, they actually spawned a highest, uh, they, they, I think, that, yes, they spawned uh, an entire incident from this, because it was a really stupid bug in their code, which allowed for a really, really easy account takeover. It's safe to agree that uh, this bug bounty is like a racing game. You have to be quicker than everyone to find some stuff, and you have to look where nobody has looked, or somebody has looked but overlooked. So it is basically patience. But could you please tell us for like this last bit for my channel? You said you were doing bounty and you didn't find anything like for hours right and then you lay down in bed and you found this while you were on your phone so what we can take from this right is just don't quit immediately <laughs> just spend a little bit of more time but what i actually wanted to get here and ask you how much do you spend a day on like when you want to research on doing bug bounty like how much in hours let's say how much do you spend a day uh so actually i don't even do bug bounty hunting every day it's mostly periodic so i have like a period where i hunt hunt for five hours a day for a week and then i don't hunt, hunt for like a few months it usually depends on my mood and on the types of features reddit rolls out thanks for having us it was pleasure to have you here and have you answer these questions these basic questions i would say and yeah man thank you you're welcome you're welcome